I'm going to teach you how to make ceramic poppies to raise money for the local Muskoka legions. So we're going to first roll a slab. What I've done here is I've kind of thrown a ball of clay down to make it flat. And as you see little cracks in the clay, just kind of erase them by smoothing them with your finger. And once you've got your clay flattened, you're going to take a rolling pin and go in several different directions just to give it that nice flat texture and you're going to rotate it upside down. As the clay starts to flatten, you're going to rotate it a little bit more consistently. This clay is a little bit old, it's kind of recycled clay, so you'll see that it's kind of cracking on the side. Um, that is normal, but you can just kind of smooth them out as you go to stop them from spreading more. I'm not pushing down too hard on the rolling pin. If you push down too hard, you could make kind of a little ski jump in the clay, so kind of just like light pressure. And I really didn't need too much clay. I took about two or three ounces of clay to make this little slab. We don't want the clay slab to be too thick because these are going to be worn as pins. Um, and if they're too thick, they're just gonna weigh the shirt down. So I'm going to give you kind of an idea of how thick this is. That will be just perfect. So once your slab it has been rolled, you take a damp sponge that you've already dipped into water and wrung the excess water out. And you're going to smooth the top of the clay to get rid of any texture left behind from the canvas pad, any imprints that the rolling pin may have left, or just any cracks. I'm gonna do that to the other side as well. So once it's been smoothed, you've got two options. We do have this pin here that Mr. Horsley, our ComTech teacher, made from the 3D printer a couple years ago. So we do have two or three of these available that you kind of just use as a little cookie cutter. And it kind of comes out with the design. It's a little bit dirty inside. That's why you're seeing some dust on it. Or we have several of these little white paper templates that you put on the clay and then you use the needle tool, the sharp needle tool, and holding it straight up and down, you just trace the outside. So those are kind of our two options. You'll notice that there's a lot of bumps from cutting this one out. You can get rid of those by kind of just peeling them off and then using your sponge on the corners to just smooth all the sides. This wet sponge is a really important part, important part of this because when this clay fires, it goes from a nice soft clay to ceramic that is actually kind of as sharp as glass so if you don't smooth the edges out they can have edges that can cut and you definitely don't want that when you're wearing these on your shirt okay so regardless of how it turns out always use a wet cloth or a wet sponge all right so now we've got the two different templates here this one has each of the four sides kind of has these little bumps Whereas this one has more of like a four leaf clover look. So your next step is just from a scrap piece of clay that you have, take about that much. You don't want too, too much. This is to make the center. You just roll it between your hands. It's a little bit dry, so I'm just gonna add a bit of water if it starts cracking. And this is to make the center of the poppy. <clears throat> 
So you can go a little bit smaller if you need to. Um, what I do is put the ball flat on the table, just so it's the bottom of it's flat and all the other tops and sides are circular. This will make it easier to attach to the poppy. So you're going to pick up the poppy and cuff your hand like this, place it in and push in the middle. And what that does is kind of curves the rest of the poppy upwards. Now you're gonna take a scoring tool. This is a, a new scoring tool for our program. It's kind of like a wire comb. And you press hard to deeply score the bottom. Or you could use a needle tool as well if you don't have the first scoring tool to kind of create hashtags. It's called scoring. And you would do the same to the bottom of the center as well. So you have to do this in order for it to stick. Okay, so this is almost like creating Velcro. But to attach the two pieces of scoring, you have to add what we call slip. Slip is kind of watered down wet clay. So you add that. You can also use water, that works as well, if you don't have slip available. And you attach the two and push down firmly. And that's gonna kind of, you can hear it almost squeaking when you attach it, and that's the seal. So you'll notice some different colors of clay there. We've actually just switched um, our clay distributor. So the lighter clay is new, the older clay is what we formerly had in the program, uh, but they both will fire the same color. So now what I'm doing is taking my thumb and my finger, my finger behind the petal, my thumb on top, and just pinching, and also kind of smoothing around with my thumb. I'm kind of popping the leaf downwards. I'm pushing up with my finger, down with my thumb, and that kind of pops it up, kind of in here, and then the tip of the petal points down. Okay, the next step is now just adding the final designs. So what I kind of do is I copy the designs from this template. So starting from the center between each of the petals, I just pull outwards. Okay, so first time you start in the middle and you can use a sharp tool or the tip of a knife. Pull outwards. And then you can also pull out in the middle of each petal, right down the center. Kind of, you imagine that's the center of a heart or the top of a heart, right down below. Just a little half line, halfway up. Okay, and then if you are feeling so inclined, you can also use a sharp pointy needle tool and poke the center now this is not necessary. Sometimes the glaze, which is the paint, kind of covers this detail, but sometimes it doesn't. It just depends on how it was applied. So this one is, uh, is kind of optional. But your finished product will look like this. Just make sure when you're finished, you put it on the table, push it down a little bit on the center. And what that'll do is kind of create a flat surface and that's where we're gonna attach the pins so that you can wear them on your shirt.